a PET scan in diagnosis of sacred iliac joint disorder? I, I wouldn't say that there's a role uh, similar to SPECT CT. Uh, this is a technique that is um, um, that has a rather high uh, radiation exposure. Like uh, you have a CT, uh, and then in addition, you have this uh, positron emitter uh, tomography. So I wouldn't recommend it to, uh, to uh, follow up patients with low back pain. So it's rather something that you, of course, can see the sacroiliac joint. And if there's inflammation, you will detect it. And you will see it very nicely. But I wouldn't uh, recommend it as a, as a, as a tool to, to, to search for, for, let's say, osteoarthritis of the joint. I also done uh, done PET scan on uh, on um, uh, when I uh, looked for loosening so the uh, I fuse implant, but it didn't uh, show anything. So, so I don't think the PET scan is part of the diagnosis of much in the SI joint. No, it's not really part um, of the diagnosis. You can do it for for um, for checking if there's a loose implant, like you do for hip for instance, but this is also can be done with, with other nuclear medicine techniques that have uh, less radiation. And I have to say in our um, uh, university hospital, there is no single surgeon who does the uh, sacroiliac joint fusion. So we don't have the patients to, um, to, to use uh, in our scanners with the fused joints that I have to say. This is John Stark. I mean, those are beautiful images of inflammatory disease. Have you used the MRI <clears throat> to study the relationships of the nearby neurovascular structures for impingement that on the nerves or vessels? And have you used the CT scan with these corrected views, the parasagittal films, paracoronal films, and so on, to look at the quality of the degeneration there? Yeah, we did. So uh, the, we didn't search for the neurovascular structures. So that is something we could definitely do in the future to pay more attention to these uh, uh, structures near the joint capsules and near the joint. But we do um, these uh, reconstructions in, 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 in oblique planes uh, and in order to compare it with this uh, X-ray and also to search for uh, like osteophytes, sclerosis, et cetera. So we are doing these three, three dimensional reconstructions for our patients. Thank you. There is a... Um dichotomy between two different points of view. One is that there are uh, patients with pseudoarthroses or bone islands or accessory joints. And some uh, doctors that believe as people get older, the SI joints fuse. And then those of us in the SI joint surgery world who see these things and the patients still have severe SI joint pain, um, maybe because there's a pseudoarthrosis going between these um, pseudofusions. Do you have any opinion about that from a radiologic point of view? So um, if there's a pseudoarthrosis, usually that is something that uh, uh, is generating a lot of pain. And uh, as in many pseudoarthrosis, there's no natural fusion of these, uh, of these uh, junctions between the bones. So I wouldn't uh, think that the older the patients get, it will fuse anyway, so it doesn't fuse. Uh, um, if, if, if joints fuse, they either have AS, ankylosing spondylitis, or they have uh, diffuse idiopathic uh, skeletal hyperostosis like forced disease, and then we have only capsular fusion. And on X-ray, it looks like they are fully fused. So these are the two mechanisms um, that are there. But, but if there are anatomical variants with osteoarthritis, usually there is no natural fusion, and, and there needs to be uh, done something with these patients. Yeah, thank you. Um. I have a question. Um, are there any special requirements for those two sequences uh, you showed us, this 3D vibe sequence and the susceptibility rating imaging? Uh, uh, luckily, uh, these are sequences that do not need to have any uh, injection into the patient. So, uh, uh, and, and the vibe sequence is readily available in, in all scanners. It's the vibe is a term that is uh, called on Siemens scanners. We have like on GE scanners, uh, it's called uh, uh, spear sequences. Uh, and also on Philips, they have different names. But these, uh, these are in fact three dimensional thin sliced volume acquisition sequences uh, that have a high cartilage contrast. So 
you can ask your radiologist to, to apply them. Usually they are applied in the knee for the cartilage or they are applied in, in liver imaging where we need to have uh, high resolution imaging for, for, for lesions in the liver. And they need to be adapted for sacral joint. And, and this is just that people in the radiology departments are not thinking about these sequences when they, when they scan the sacral joint. So that's, that's the only trick. So they are there already. Okay. So I have another question because you have a lot of experience about inflammatory diseases uh, like ankylosing spondylitis. Um, and we are often discussing among surgeons if we should do surgery on those patients or when should we do surgery on those patients. And um, my question now is, what is your impression? How long ta will it or takes it until fusion occurs? And how many patients do you see where even the newest immunomodulatory top drugs do not work? Uh, because uh, These new drugs are a great benefit for the patients, but there are also uh, some that don't respond. So um, nowadays, um, fusion, natural fusion of the sacral joint in AS patients is, is only occurring if the patients are neglecting the, the, the disease and are, ne are refusing visiting a doctor. So when I started my career 22 years ago, there was a lot of fusing, fusing of the sacral joints. And this is completely gone because most of the patients, they benefit from any of the drugs. So um, we have now very early cases with bone edema and some erosions. And, and it, is, it is completely unclear if these patients are ever going into fusion of the joints, if they have some drugs over, over the course of their disease. So... Uh, also from the, from the uh, pathogenesis of the disease, we have an inflammation in the joint. We have like antithesitis and at the capsules, the, 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 the fibrocartilage in the joint is inflamed. So, um, so fusing these joints and, 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 and producing pressure on this fibrocartilage. Um, so I think first you would need to, to remove The, the, the cartilage, like if you do an ankle uh, joint fusion, you, you, you do a synovectomy first, or maybe you, you, you uh, destroy the cartilage in order to get bony fusion. And you would need, uh, uh, you would, you would need to do that before uh, having a bone to bone fusion. So that's rather complex uh, procedure, I guess, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to learn if, if it's not as complicated. To my experience, I operated on some uh, of uh, uh, or on some patients with an ankylosing spondylitis, and they fused really fast, much faster than all the other patients. But they only fused um, due to your procedure. There was no and, and how advanced were they? Did they have already so like uh, 20, 40 erosions with, 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 with narrowing of the joint? So was it yes, already yes. over? So there was yes. no inflammation left in the joint? No, it was, it was, still, it was still an inflammation. Okay. It was not ausgebrannt, <laughs> like you say. Okay. It was, was uh, an inflammation, an active inflammation. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Thank you for having me and uh, wish you a nice congress. <laughs>